back to our listeners and viewers. This is the fifth episode in our series at the Better Policy Project, where we explore critical topics in economic policy and financial literacy. I'm Svetlana Sagarian, a level one student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the Central Bank of Armenia. Today, we are diving into the concept of non-traded sticky price inflation with Narek Gazarian, a board member at the Central Bank of Armenia with extensive experience from his years at the IMF. Narek, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Svetlana. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited to share insights on this topic, especially given how crucial understanding non-traded sticky price inflation is for small open economies like Armenia. Let's start with a simple breakdown. Why is non-traded sticky price inflation such a significant focus? Non-traded sticky price inflation captures the prices of goods and services that don't fluctuate as quickly as traded or flexible prices. Think of things like housing or healthcare, costs that tend to remain stable over time. By separating these from more volatile, flexible prices, like food and energy, we get a clearer view of underlying domestic demand and inflation expectations in an economy. This separation is especially useful for central banks as it helps to target policy effectively. So non-traded sticky prices are less reactive to external shocks? Exactly. While flexible prices can respond almost immediately to things like exchange rate shifts or commodity price changes, Non-traded sticky prices are more influenced by domestic economic conditions. For example, during periods of high inflation, we often see flexible prices rise first, sticky prices adjust later and at a slower pace. This lag can help central banks identify whether inflationary pressures are being driven by temporary external factors or more persistent domestic issues. That makes sense. Can you give us some historical context on how these measures have been useful? Certainly. Take the oil price shocks of the 1970s. During the first shock in 1973 to 74, oil prices quadrupled. Flexible prices reacted immediately, while sticky prices, like housing and healthcare, took longer to adjust. However, when inflation persisted and the second oil shock hit, these sticky prices started to increase rapidly as well. They became entrenched and it required high interest rates and the Volcker disinflation in the 1980s to bring them back down, which came at the cost of a deep recession. That's a powerful example. So the lesson here is that when sticky prices begin to ratchet up, it can signal that uh, inflation is becoming more entrenched. Exactly. Once sticky prices adjust upward, they're difficult to bring back down. This is why it's vital to monitor non-traded sticky price inflation closely, especially in economies with high dollarization or where inflation expectations risk becoming unanchored. Speaking of dollarization, Armenia still has some excessive dollarization. How does this affect non-traded sticky price inflation? Great question. In highly dollarized economies, even non-traded goods prices, like rent, may be set in foreign currencies due to a lack of trust in the local currency. As Armenia's economy becomes less dollarized, non-traded sticky prices should more accurately reflect domestic factors rather than external exchange rate pressures. How is this relevant to current conditions in the US and Euro area? We've extended this analysis to these regions, and the results are noteworthy. Underlying inflation measures in both the US and Euro area remain above target. Even simpler proxies, like service prices, show levels above target, which indicates the battle against inflation is far from over. These sticky price measures tend to track closely with wages, which also adjust infrequently. If the inflationary pressures in wages and services remain high, it suggests that inflation may be more persistent than some are predicting. That's insightful. So in summary, understanding non-traded sticky price inflation provides a valuable lens uh, for policymakers in economies like Armenia and beyond. Absolutely. 
By monitoring these measures, central banks can better judge whether inflationary pressures are temporary or more entrenched. This helps ensure that policy responses are timely and targeted, preventing the costly mistake of allowing inflation to become embedded. Thank you, Narek, for sharing your expertise. Uh, to our listeners, if you'd like to support our work and the Better Policy Project's mission to improve financial literacy, please subscribe to our channel. And if you're interested in advancing your skills, we offer two scholarships annually to the Global Forecasting School, where you can uh, learn to analyze global economies at the highest level. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for joining us and see you in our next episode. Thank you.